Aloha mai kāko. Aloha. Uh, o wāono o Evelani Palakiko, mai ka mai ke awaawa o ka uula ma lahaina. Uh, my name is Evelani Palakiko and I am from ka uula. Uh, I just wanted to just uh, express two points on the IFS situation. Um, one point is that I would highly encourage and strongly somewhat demand that you folks continue to push for funding so that you can get the support and the positions that you need to regulate and monitor um, the situation with private land, I mean, private water companies on Maui. Um, that is the one thing that we are extremely lacking. You can have all the rules in the world, but if you have no regulation, then the rules mean nothing. And um, with that, <clears throat> I'm also in support of Mauka to Makai water flow, especially in Kawaula. Uh, as you see in the pictures, we are very much reliant. Our ohana is very much dependent on that um, siphon. If that siphon is cleaned or it's damaged or needs to be repaired, the water gets turned off. And it happens once or twice a year where the valley goes silent. And if you are connected to the aina, if you're connected to where you're from, when there's a change in the volume or a change in the atmosphere, you feel it at a, at a different level than what most people can understand. And so when the river stops running, the valley goes silent and we know something is wrong. And so several times, my ohana, when we hear nothing, we know something is wrong. And we go out there with flashlights in the middle of the night, trying to grab as much o'opu, hihi vai, trying to put them into different water ponds that still exist. We have hundreds, maybe thousands of pictures through the years of water just being depleted, drained, um, stopped flowing in our valley. And it hurts the ecosystem. It hurts our ohana. It hurts the things that we were trying to do for our community and for our kaiaulu. Uh, currently, the water does not run all the way to the ocean. And since the fire, we can see in our rocks the change of water pressure, um, water flow. We have the, you know, the the, it's already low all the time anyway, but it's even lower than what it normally is. And you can see the stains on the rocks and whatnot. And so I'm just here to um, encourage you folks to get, continue to push for the funding to mandate and regulate these private companies so that these rules can actually be put in place and monitored <coughs> and actually benefit our community. And to, I am only in support of Mauka to Makai water flow for all of our streams in West Maui. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Hello, my tato. Oh no, Uli, Mahawaba, Kaula, Ioa, Matne, Noka, Beve, Manaoak, Uhana, Yaku, Pakaya Po. My name is Kule. Uh, I'm the Kane of that beautiful Ahini that was right here before me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to speak, I'm not going to take the time right now to speak on the things that you've heard over and over again because you've heard abundant testimony that should really paint the clearest picture of the reality of things. I started my Olela Hawaii. Because I want to return you to something. You know, you guys have it within your guys' titles that you guys are kahu. Yeah? You guys are kahu wai. So I want to activate that Hawaiian word. I want you guys to activate that Hawaiian word of what it means to be a kahu. You know, maybe you know kahu is translated as your pastor. Kahu of a church. Kahu of Waiola church, for instance. A kahu has very strict very um, a, a very stringent line that they walk of Pono because they carry so much kuleana in the formation and in the pai pai, in the, in the support, the kako'o of those that are under their leadership. Yeah? And that's where you guys stand. You guys put that term together, that you guys are kahu po, a kahuvai pono. And then, of course, not just to be kahuvai, kahu of the vai, but yet you guys add the word pono in there. The three words make you guys a very, very explicit group of kahu. And I, I wanted to point that out to you guys because I feel that you all have taken your time and you're here and you have decided to take on this kuleana and have done it for as long as many of you have done it because you believe in something. I'm asking you to believe in what kahu is. And that you guys have been called into a kahu ship. And that kahu ship, according to your definition, is to be kahus of the vai. And then to be not just kahus of the vai, but to be pono in your kahu ship of that vai. So just let that weight just carry on your shoulders as you guys come from meeting to meeting. And as you guys enter in your sessions, that you guys remember what you guys are here for. 
That's my first kahil. Because if you guys carry that mantle, then everything that all of our kanaka have been speaking to you will come to pass. Because they're speaking from Pono. You guys want to move in Pono. So the alignment will be the same. The second thing I just want to say is, as soon as the fires happened, we were inundated with a bunch of different things, including reporters and journalists from around the world. For the first week of the fire, uh, after the fire, they all wanted to talk about the fire. But slowly... They and don't understand the money. Why? No entiendo? Uh -huh. it's slowly true. and then eventually, uh, all encompassing, uh, sí, they moved sí, away from the fire. And by the second week, you know what they wanted to talk about? What is this water rights thing that I'm hearing about? How is it that so close after a disaster of that caliber, of this caliber, that the world was hearing the term water being utilized in conjunction with what was now exposed. So we come to understand that at the depth of who we are and of our livelihood is vi. It's at the very core of it all. It's at the core of what the corporations would utilize it for, for their for-profit enterprises. It's at the core of what we would utilize it for, for the balance of our honua and our kanaka and our lahui. Vi is right at the core of it all. And so the last thing I'm going to say is I would, I have to make a statement. And the statement is simple. I am a Christian and I believe in Keakua and I follow Keakua of the Paipala. And I don't know who this God is that Peter Martin is saying is a God of wrath that wanted to kill people because they wasn't using the water properly. But that's not Keakua. And I'm going to stand firm and I hope you guys hear me. <laughs> Dispel that myth right now. I believe in Keakua. And I'm going to tell you that Keakua is a God of love and a restoration and abundant life. And that being said, I'm going to just remind, I just want to put Kuliana on you guys' shoulders. You guys carry enough, I'm sure. I'm going to add some more weight, okay? And this is the final weight I'm going to add. In the Bible, we're reminded of a historical account where the Jews were now displaced from their homeland. And if you read the story of Esther, she became the queen. And she had power under that particular position. But at the same time, there was a plot to annihilate all of the Jews. Genocide, complete genocide. Mordecai, her uncle, Hadassah, her uncle, caught wind of this. And so came to the, uh, the niece. And what did he say? He said, you know what? If you don't stand up at this time. I am sure God would have someone else stand up for be exactly who we need them to be at this time. But the phrase that always caught me is, he reminded her, perhaps, just perhaps, you have been elevated to this position for a time such as this. I leave you with that. Not perhaps, you have been elevated to the kuliana as kahuvaipono for a time such as this unprecedented water commissioners take that mana and the, and i would just tell you people are always asking me what you think about what this person or this politician or what this they said in their speech and i always tell them this come back and visit me in three months in six months because it doesn't matter what your olelo is it matters what your hana is so what i ask of you guys is to take your kahu ship seriously and never mind what happened last month, Miss Chang. Never mind what happened last month. If you are involved in any of the shenanigans that we are now seeing coming to light, you can change that. You can start to take seriously your position if you're not already, and you can move in the direction of being Pono in that scholarship of the Vai. And I can only wait with anticipation to see the mana that comes from your actions. If you stand in your scholarship, I felt that weight, brother. Um, do I have anybody else from Maui who has not spoken that would like to speak? Come on up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Aloha, my name is DeAndre Makako. Uh, I come from the Ka'ahanui family from Lahaina, Maui. Um, Excuse me, and this is no disrespect. Mr. Oh. Meyer has to make a phone call. Okay. All right. Excuse me. Sorry. No, you're <laughs> I, I gave him permission. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
So I was living in Lahaina, uh, Wahikuli, on Ainakea Road. My house burned down. Me, my pregnant wife, and my 11-month-old son had to evacuate. But thankfully, we got long-term housing. We moved up to Kula. But Kula is another area that's known for drought, right? So the same thing we're talking about with Lahaina and the water diversion. We look at Kula, that Ahukua goes to Wailea. That's another hotel district. So same story, yeah? But I just wanted to address that real quick. Um, water restrictions for the community. I want to talk about August, but August 2022. I was living in Wahikuli, and at that time, it was illegal for us to water our grass or wash our car. And we, or with the fines, you know, that everybody was talking about, you get fined for overusage of water, and our neighbors would be taking pictures of their own neighbors to report them to the county. So that division in our own community with water, right, which is a basic need. Um, earlier, someone mentioned that whatever, why aren't Peter Martin them here? Um, it's because they're not the true stakeholders in this. You know, we are the true stakeholders, the, the people who I want. My wife is pregnant. I just mentioned that, right? And my fucking, sorry, my son will not be born in Lahaina. Like I was, like my sister and my brothers, my parents, or sorry, my mom, and my oldest son was. But now I have to be up country, which is not my hometown, which is not my son's hometown, but is going to be the birthplace of my second son. And that was caused by all of this generations of water diversion, water diversion and mismanagement. And like I said, we're the true stakeholders and a lot of people have mentioned selfless acts. When you look at the desires of both sides of the coin, one side is selfless. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't intend to make money off of water. I want the streams to be restored so that my kids can enjoy Lahaina. I got to go to a Lahaina that was a little more green than it is now with a little more water than it has now. And that's gone now. Hearing stories of our uncles and aunties and our parents and our kupuna, what they got to see and experience we have that fear that our kids will never get to experience that, right? So that's what I mean by stakeholder. Our stake in this is for future generations. Whereas Peter Martin, West Maui Land Company, people like him, their stake in this is to line their own pockets. It's for profit. And maybe they're thinking about their future generations, but not in a, in a holistic sense that encompasses all, encompasses all of us. And speaking on Peter Martin, I don't speak for everybody here. Most people don't even know who I am. But I can confidently say that Peter Martin is the face of evil in Lahaina and probably most of Maui. And our community agrees with that. And to line with him and support him over the community shows what your intentions are too. That means you side with evil. If we look at Peter Martin as evil and then we have to look at you guys as our adversaries as well, because it seems like you line up with him. Then logically, I can only look at you as evil too. But sitting here today, I'm not experienced with this. This is, this is new to me. I actually feel ashamed because this is new to me. We should have been fighting with Uncle Kai and Uncle Keomoku all this time. So I take blame for the fire happening in my hometown because I only chose to fight after the fact. But logically, the right move is to go with, just with the community. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there, but um, yeah. Someone mentioned earlier, you're putting your kids on the va'a, but we're not going on there with them. And that hit me hard because, you know, you do feel helpless. I wanna see a better future for my kids, but it feels like I am putting them on a va'a to a future that I don't know, to a land that I don't know what it's gonna look like. And, I don't have any say in it. I, I don't know how to build, I don't know how to set sails and I don't know how to navigate courses. And what I'm leading to with this analogy is that I'm putting my kids future in your hands. And right now that scares the shit out of me. I'm sorry to say, but uh, yeah, the right thing is not hard to do. Mahalo. <laughs> That's from Maui that would like to provide state a testimony. You don't get go. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Come on up, Manny. You are you are you have Ohana from Maui. Aloha, Manny. I'm gonna wear this hat because my mentor, Dr. Paul Nakayama, a Hawaiian, born in Kaka'ako, got 
got shadowed by the United States government because of his brilliance, went to Michigan State, went to Purdue, got his PhD, had a monopoly on nuclear criticality, I was the only non-white in the Atomic Energy Commission, now known as the Department of Energy. It's no coincidence that she came last week, Monday, by the way, okay? <coughs> My 52 years of running around in this very building, this is the most significant, most heavy conversation I've ever been a part of. Auntie Dawn, my Auntie Dawn. Hi. Long time. My dear friend, my sister, Miss <laughs> Ho, Kathy Ho. When the bombing of Kahoolawe got stopped on my birthday because of a white paper written by Dr. Noah Emmett Aluli to the Republican Party and George Herbert Walker Bush and John Sununu. Yeah, October 22nd, 1990. As some individuals have said, it was as almost as if God has prepared us, Ms. Ho, to be there for Red Hill. You too, you're a doctorate. You ask the right questions. Not softball questions. The kind fastball, curves, change-ups, and some little... You know, like off, just to throw them off. Maybe you beam them. You beam them anyway, right? That is her. That is her. Doctor Mike, I grew up with your name as a young man. Uncle Gilbert Tam, hmm. right? Who was Uncle Gilbert Tam? Who? Who was he? Who? Who was Mr. Gilbert? Uncle Gilbert Tam. Hmm. Tell me. You tell me, Mr. Mike. Who was Mr. Tam? Am I wrong? Am I saying the wrong name? Yes, yeah, sure. Will Tab. Will Tab. There you go. I've been waiting for you. Correct me. That's a big mistake. No, it's not a mistake. It's called a malaprop. A malaprop. Bill Tam and Gil Tam is very different. <laughs> so in Coca, yeah, there's a PhD Coca and there's a DR doctor, right? Kauka, Kauka, like Uncle Pali Kapu Deadman used to tease Emmett and Deviana McGregor in Hakiwaba. Kauka, 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 Kauka. What about us, Kauka? We get our own PhD. We're not going to go to UH Manoa, Hawaiian Studies, Kamaka Kuokalani, okay, Ali Kuokalani. When Uncle Emmett passed, Auntie, Auntie. I know. when Uncle Emmett passed, yes. when Uncle Bill Tam was in the line, I spent the whole time with him. Walking to Emmett's casket. Brother, thank you. Brother, thank you. I hope Kamehameha School hires you someday. They better not. Because they used to hire, they used to hire Uncle Neil Hannes. It's so the last time I saw you, Uncle Neil. You remember me? Do you remember who? You know who I am? Do you remember? You used to always sit in the first class Hawaiian, and I used to be right next to you. You remember? You remember? Yes. You remember? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere. You wrote a beautiful speech one time for Auntie Anel Amaral, mm. who was the United States Army's liaison to the U.S. Army Pacific. You remember your speech at for the Russi? For the Russi? Oh. For the Army tank? Yeah. Huh? You remember? You used the alliteration. You want to repeat what you said? We got to work together. Huh? Keiki. Yeah. Huh? Yep. Keiki. Kane. Koa. Kahu. Remember? <laughs> I'm here, Auntie Dawn. Because that red book that the sister didn't bring up. Where's that red book? Oh, she's gone already. See that last name right there? Koloya? It's in that book that they butcher, by the way. Still butchering it. When Kamehameha schools wrote their master plan, what Kaya Ulu or what? For over here, Kakako? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? They made Uncle Howard Hammett go do that. What law, what law? My dad would say that. What law, what law, what law? <laughs> You're right. When Kamehameha schools were so proud to go Manny. We found the name of Honolulu Harbor. It was called Kulolia. They were so proud. Kikuela Kikiloi. And the Hoku's dog. 
Sister, what her name? Run. Huh? Ula Leah. Ula Leah. And you know what I tell them? Who said it's called Kulo Leah? Oh, a Mr. Cartwright. Yeah, Mr. Cartwright, a, a wannabe cartographer. And I go, come here, me a schools. Is this your final answer? I go, Auntie Dom, don't, don't cut me off like how you did talk. No, 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 you give me one more minute. I deserve it. You, did, you have been patient. You're exactly sir. correct. You have been patient. So you go ahead. Because, because. Whatever happened to Kaleo Manuel, I did what my dad taught me. And I gave you a call. You did. You I left did. you a message. You did. That's you between did. you and me. You did. Yes. I was invited by Earth Justice, Sierra Club, Ahamoku, Leimana, everybody in Hawaii. Manny, I want you to show up and stand with us in front of the Capitol. What do you think I did, Mr. Hannes? You didn't show up. Huh? You didn't go, right? Oh, I showed up, by the way. I showed up. <laughs> and I took a picture of everybody that was standing up. But I was by the column. And before they did their press release, what do you think I did? Are you Mr. Katayama? Yes, You're I from am. Kauai? Yes. My mama was from Kauai. She's a, she's a decoster. <laughs> you know? That's my uncle, Francis Cuckoo de Costa. He used to be Yo. a range safety officer. PMRF, duty 105. He's playing softball. Right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Sorry, Auntie. I owe this. Are you? You, I'll never come back here ever again. I don't care. <laughs> you have the floor. Because when I worked for Lockheed Martin in Albuquerque, New Mexico, beating for the cleanup of Kaolavia Island as a give back to U.S. Senator Daniel Inouye that had oversight of the CIA. And it says, Manny, Uncle Les, we want to, we want to, we want to, we want to bid for the boss contract. You know what's a boss contract of the PMRF? Anybody? You guys hear of Dyncor, Floor, yeah? I don't know, Kaolavi. Who's the boss in Kaolavi? Dawson! Dawson! Sorry, uncle. I get, I get business. Mm. I love Kauai. When I hear that kind of rain counts at Pukukui and Eke, oh, oh, my heart hurt today. The briefing that I heard, that's the kind of briefing that uh, Robin Danner would give to First Hawaiian Bank about the Akaka bill when she was running CHA, CNHA. Not the abridged version that they give us. And you don't. I'm going there. You, I hope okay? you, bro brother, you're getting there. You're getting there. Uncle, I love you. How's your daughter and your son, by the way? Still playing music? <laughs> Good. Because you know why? You know your consultant business that you have? Uncle. Uncle Paul. How are you, Uncle Paul? <laughs> how, how are you? I'm good. Because my will in pine. Yes, sir. Uncle Vince. Uh, Once upon a time, work for the company. Every Chumbly. All them, right? I you tell know. them. You tell them Manny said. And if we're working Chumbly. No, no. I know who you work for. You tell them Manny said you better bring on the best of the best of the best. And even if you leave this job, Auntie Don, because I went to the fifth floor before the protesters did their press release. Yes, Auntie Don. And you know what I did? You know what I did? I went to the fifth floor and I walked in proudly. And I looked around. They looked at me like, oh, who this guy? Mm. Last time I've been in, they don't want to know why I've been there last time. And this young, nice local brother came up to me with class. His name was Nick. How can I help you? I go, yeah, I act like a real dummy. You know what? You know, when I was young, we go, you know, on PBS, they get the kind of channels on Saturday. You know, I used to watch like uh, Jetsons or. <laughs> yes, there's only a bill and I'm going to hear on Capitol Hill. Right. Okay. So Cleopatra, <coughs> I'm not going to write some letter to the Maui News. No, I know what to do. And I went. I went, Nick, I'm looking for JBG. The guy that I went gave $1,000 for his campaign. 
I'm looking for his chief of staff, Brooke Wilson. Are they available to me? My thousand dollar access. And to Don, I'm going there. Okay, I trust you. The guy went behind. I'm sorry, it's not him. Well, you know what? Guess what you think I did, Uncle Neil? You told me I see him. Huh? You told me I see him. No, 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 no. You never leave there. He says, I'll take a note. So I gave him a courtesy. And said, wait, you're going to love this. You're going to love this one. So when everybody was praying on that day, all the chants, Yale, Kala Ika Hikina, Ika Moana, Tamona Ho, Honu, Pika Leva, Kaleva Nu, Ika Hikina, Ayakala, Yale. Where that chant came from, Auntie Don? Go love it. Okay. Right? And he them. Exactly, for a cleanup. Right, right. Mr. Hannes. We're talking about the best of the best of the best. And it on. Yes. So while he's over there listening to the chanters over there at the St. Thomas Square, mm. I don't know who that chanter was looking at the Blackberry. If my dad was like, oh my God, he'll be pissed off with that son of a gun. <laughs> but when the governor was leaving, Auntie Don, yes. I got to intercept oh, his gubernatorial protection. Oh, and what did you say? That's between you and the governor. <laughs> so finally, I am here okay. because I named my daughter Kekao Onohi, who's mm. buried at Waine'e Church, mm. now known as Waiola. Mm. The royal Maui lineages are buried there. That Kamehameha schools peaceful, right? Mr. Hanas. Keopuolani. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The rural. Right. My daughter is named after Kekao Nui, the first child of Kamehameha with Peleuli. Not Kamehameha the first. Liliha. Ulumahehe. Wapilikane. Kaheim hei malie. Wapili wahine. Kaumuali'i. And Kaahumanu. Need I, need I go more? Besides Mokuula. Kihavahine, the image on the port side of the Hoku Lea. Mm -hmm. The alliteration is one end, I promise. I think. 10 seconds. Here we go. You're going to love this one. Okay. I quote This is from a Maui firebrand, one of the best politicians from Maui. This is her words. Figure it out. It is easy enough to vote right and be consistently with the majority. But it is often more important to be ahead of the majority. This means being willing to cut the first furrow in the ground and stand alone for a while while it's necessary. Any of you want to take a guess who that what is? Okay, I'll give you one more and that's it. Promise that you don't. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to love this one. Okay. To whatever degree each of you here today acknowledge a sense of individual responsibility for the common good and for the welfare of others less fortunate than you, I urge you not to lose it, to cherish it, and to make that sense of purpose your higher goal for life so as to give it great dimension and meaning. You know where this came from? I just took a picture of this because I was hoping if Keith, if Keith Reagan Agaron never opened that door for me so I can use the bathroom and they don't like how he did to me the last time with the Aomoku, I was going to bust that door in front of you. Yeah, I'm telling you. It's so, because I never like get mad at Keith, like how I got mad at Herman and Daya. I walked across to the library, go use the bathroom in the public library, and as I'm coming out the library, I see this statue by the, you know what I'm talking about, sir? You know what I'm talking about? Well, guess who? Who's that politician? That's me. Exactly. That's me. Takeyama me. So like the alliteration, auntie, I end with words have the power. The manna, Right? My grandma said, I got to watch what I say. She always tell my dad, you watch yourself. Uh, your, my, Leslie, 
less, uncle less, more or less, useless, whatever you want to call him. Uncle less, uncle less. <laughs> yeah? You're right. But when the government has a problem and they don't, who do they call? Mm. Who did they call? Uncle less. Uncle less. Well, uncle less is not here anymore. Who do you think they're calling? Nanny. So when Red Hill happened, I promise I'm coming to a close. Mr. Meyer, you're going to love this. My daughter is watching all these children cry on TV. Kathleen. And she goes, Manny, Dad, don't you work for the U.S. Navy? Don't you work at Pearl Harbor? Aren't you a quality assurance manager? My daughter... Seven years old, named Kikaro Nohi after her ancestor, the Kamehameha school doesn't want to acknowledge because it's too controversial, by the way. But for my brother Pellegrino, Okuao, our ancestor was a Wahine, yeah? Kunia and Paki, Wahine Kulaloya managed that plot where he lives. He grows tarot today. The word, the alliteration, you're going to like this, uncle. <laughs> Like core, right? Kane. Words have the power to hurt, to humiliate, to humor, to humble, or to heal. Josh Green. If you know better and your whatever is watching, because he never introduced the Kamehameha schools as the Kamehameha school students at the UN on Sunday. He says, the students from Hawaii. He didn't talk about the place. He says, that place. He referenced Lahaina once and Maui zilch. So the healing will start with me, Auntie Dawn. Okay. okay? But Josh, Booth Green, Auntie Dawn, <laughs> the it. next time around, my $6,000 is going to go that way. Okay. Okay? Okay. And when I'm flying the Hawaiian Airlines flight, and we see this fire on our left, and I see this beautiful Hawaiian girl next to me, and I'm telling her, What's your name? She goes, that's my family down there, burning. And I'm crying. And I'm reading a magazine. And I'm reading about Uncle Archie Kalepa and Tiare Lawrence mm -hmm. opening up these lands. I think they're in fight coming in schools, by the way, to gain access. Okay. No, no, I'm yes, ending. We'll you want like this. We'll fight. Hey. Okay, okay. That was beautiful. Yes. And I look at her, I go, you look so familiar, sister. You look like one Casco. Mm. Her name was Harmony. I go, Harmony, I grew up in you as a baby girl. I used to go with your auntie, whose father was Herman, the eldest of all the siblings. Auntie, and you know what I told them? Reading that article from Uncle Archie with Tiare and seeing you, Harmony, means more to me then going to the celebratory victory at the Maui Arts and Culture Center that night that I was already late, by the way, for my cousin, Ricky Beeson. Do you get the point? Do you get the point? I do. Where I gave him $4,000. On that closer, you know, mahalo. Hello, Archie. Oh, thank you. Thank you.